morning and welcome to Vaughn Forest Church Online and Merry Christmas. My name is Cecilia and we're so excited that you have joined us today. If this is your first time here at Vaughn Forest Church, welcome. If you've joined us before, welcome back. You picked a great day to join us online as we're continuing our Christmas series called The Purpose of Christmas, which is all about the hope we can find in Jesus and how that hope came to our world at Christmas. But before we get to that, we have just a couple of things we want to share with you. So many of you have let us know how useful our Vaughn Forest Church app has been for you, and we're excited that you're enjoying it. The app plays an important role each week in making sure that you have all the content you need to fully be part of our gatherings. In our app, we have message notes, ways for you to respond and give, announcements, videos, and more. If you have not yet downloaded our Vaughn Forest Church app, we would love for you to take this opportunity to do that. Simply search Vaughn Forest Church in the Apple Store or the Google Play Store and you can download it for free. If you have any questions or need help downloading our app, please email our staff at info at vaughnforest.com and we'll be happy to assist you. Next, in the description of this video and in our Vaughn Forest Church app, there's a link to our online connection card. You can also use the camera app on your phone to scan the QR code on the screen to quickly take you to the connection card. Just take out your phone, open the camera app, and point it to the QR code on the screen, and the link should pop up to take you to our digital connection card. It's super easy. Once you have the connection card open on your device, we would like to ask everyone to take a moment to fill that card out. All we ask from you with this card is that you fill out as much information as you feel comfortable sharing. The great thing about our digital connection card is that if you decide that there are any next steps you want to take today, or if you have any prayer requests to submit, you can very quickly and easily do so. We'll be sure to follow up with you this week on anything that you submit. Finally, if you're viewing this live stream on social media, we would love for you to like our stream and click that share button so that your friends and family can join us as we gather online today. Our team works hard to make this gathering the best and most encouraging part of your week. And we want to include everyone in on that encouragement and on what God is doing at Vaughn Forest Church online. Like I said earlier, we're looking forward to a great day together and a great Christmas season. Feel free to engage in conversation in our comment section and we'll have a pastor ready to respond to any questions, comments, or prayer requests that you may have today. Thanks again for joining us. Vaughn Forest Church Online starts right now. Well, good morning, friends. We are so glad you are here this morning, both in the room and online. We got some old friends with us, Mr. Charles and Mary back there on keys. Hey, let's go ahead and let's stand up and let's praise the Lord together. Savior. 
together and we'll praise his name this morning.
church, the beauty of Christmas is that our Heavenly Father, the one who spoke everything in existence, saw us in darkness and came for us, bringing us hope, bringing us peace, and reconciling us to the Father. That's why he's called Prince of Peace, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. This morning, let's sing his name. Let's proclaim it because we have hope and he's worthy of our praise.
Father, we are praising your name here. We are lifting you high. God, for your peace, for what you did on the cross for us, for you stepping into darkness and making a way for us. God, we are forever singing your praises, forevermore. We lift you high. It's in your son's holy and pleasing name, Jesus Christ, amen. You guys can have a seat. Good morning. How are y'all doing this morning? Awesome. Great. Y'all are awake. That's incredible. You know, I absolutely love this time of year. It's one of my favorite uh, times of year. I, I like cooler weather. Um, of course, that doesn't mean a whole lot being in the South, but I, I enjoy that when it happens and it coincides with Christmas. Um, I, I love, it's not Christmas for me until I've watched a couple movies. Um, there's a couple movies that I absolutely love. Um, for one, uh, it's, it's not Christmas unless I've seen the uh, National Land's Poons Christmas Vacation. A anybody else? Anybody else? That's a family tradition for us. Yeah, I got some, I got a little bit of, like somebody's like, yeah, there you go. That's a good one. Um, and the, the reason why I like that one so much is, is because it doesn't matter how crazy your family is, everybody tries a little bit on Christmas. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't matter how wild or how landish or offensive your family is, everybody, even if you have a cousin Eddie, right? They make an effort, right? Just a little bit. I, I mean, I love Christmas, even those who, um, who aren't Christians. You know, it, it's just, in general, the, the time of year is cheerful. It's pleasant. It's peaceful, in a sense, isn't it? I mean, people are, uh, they're, they're, every now and then you get caught in one of those lines where you pay for the person behind you at Starbucks. You ever get caught in one of those? And you're like, I only ordered a black cup of coffee, but for some reason that guy behind me ordered like $30 worth of stuff, and I guess I have to keep it going. Anybody else? No, but I mean, but it's a good time of year. It's a great time time of year. I love Christmas, and we've been on, in our Christmas series called The Purpose of Christmas. In fact, Rick Warren, he wrote a really great book called The Purpose of Christmas, uh, and it's been an excellent resource for us as we've been, as we've been diving into the Christmas series uh, th this year. Um, and in fact, if you want to go a little bit deeper into some of the things that we've been discussing throughout this series, I'd encourage you, pick it up. It's a really, really good book. Uh, in, in fact, Adam, over the last two weeks, um, what we've been doing is we've been framing this series out by reading through Luke chapter 2, specifically focusing on the announcement of Jesus, that all of a sudden an angel appears before shepherds in a field, and the angel goes, don't be afraid, all right, because angels, they're not cute like puppies, and, and he announces this, first week we, we saw that, that Christmas is a time for celebration, they rejoice, you know, I tell you, this year, it's, it's been a pretty tough year, and it's kind of hard to find some things to be excited about, especially going into this holiday season. But the beauty is, within Jesus, we have more than enough to rejoice about. There's more than enough. Not only that, but last week we, we talked about how Christmas is a time for salvation. It's so funny. I, I don't know if you do this, but I do this all the time when it comes to the Christmas season. I get caught up in the, the, the songs, and I get caught up in the decorations, and even the birth of Jesus Christ, but somehow I fail to connect that Jesus coming into the world means my Savior came into the world, right? That Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, and favor with God and man, and, and he started his public ministry that ultimately led him to the cross and his resurrection. And that's actually, it's going to lead into what we're going to be talking about today. That Christmas is a time for reconciliation. 
If you want to follow along today, if you're, you're one of those notes people and you want to follow along, we actually have a digital form of doing that. Uh, we have a QR code right here. All you got to do to access this QR code is, is open your phone's camera app, hold it up here. A link will pop up and uh, it'll take you directly to the notes so you can follow along. And we're actually, we're going to be picking up right where we left off last week in Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 12. So uh, let's dive right in. Here we go. It says this in Luke 2, starting in 12. It says, This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. See, Christmas is a time for reconciliation. Real quick, let's define what re- reconciliation is because a lot of times we tend to bring our own definitions to thing and things. And w- so reconciliation, we're going we're gonna to define it in this way, that reconciliation is, we'll go, reconciliation is the restoration of peace. That's exactly what it is. In fact, we can read verse 14 in this way, that the birth of Jesus brings on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. And so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to take a look at three areas in our life where Jesus brings peace. Then that morning when when God put on flesh and was born of a virgin, that he brought peace in three very specific ways. The first way is this, is that Jesus offers you peace with God. You know, it's really funny that there's, I love the fact that this angel in Luke chapter 2 comes and announces what Jesus will do, right? That a Savior has come. And then what we can do is we can flip over to to 2 Corinthians. There's another verse where where, uh, the Apostle Paul, what he does is he explains what Jesus has done. And I love the fact that they line up. I love the fact that they connect, Because we see that we worship a God who keeps his promises. And not only that, but Jesus came and did exactly what he promised he would do. So let's check it out right here. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself, right? All of this, this this new creation, this new life that he's given us, the old past, the new coming in is through Christ who reconciled us to himself. Jesus offers us peace with God. When it comes to our understanding of God, you know, a lot of times we have that, that old time religion a little bit and, and our, it, it's somewhat incomplete when we think of the gospel. And what I mean by that is we often think that what we're saved from, from Satan to a holy and loving God, all right? And, and, and although we have a very real adversary, a very real enemy who comes to seek, kill, and destroy and wants us not to find love in the arms of our great God— What we often fail to realize is that Scripture also teaches that we are saved from God to God. Think about that for a second. See, when we attempt to live our way and not God's way, when we are in, we we, it puts us in direct conflict with God. And all that, but we often continue to live our way, continually walking out what God does not desire and continuing to walk in this conflict. You know, I think it's safe to assume that none of us in here would go, you know what, I'm at war with God and I enjoy being at war with God. I don't think we'd ever say that. But when we start to think about the way in which we live and the things that we do, does it reflect being at peace with God? and being obedient to the way in which he's called us to live? Or do we live simply the way in which we want to? I love this verse in Isaiah 53, 6. It says, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of us all. 
I, I love this. This is an Old Testament prophecy that only, not only states our condition, right, that we are all like sheep who, who have, have gone astray, right? We're looking for greener pastures, something that's greater than what we currently have, forsaking the fact that we are walking away from a shepherd who cares for us greatly, who looks out for us, who protects us. But what I also enjoy about this passage is it also points out to what link God would go to reconcile us to himself. What he would do to make peace with us. Right? It, it says that, that, he, that we are no longer enemies of God, but the Lord laid, has laid on him Jesus, right? That him is Jesus, the iniquities of us all. See, the purpose of Christmas, the purpose of of God bringing Jesus into the world is so that we can have peace with him. So we're no longer enemies of God, but we are now children. And really what this boils down to is that you, you, before Jesus, we, we had God, and then because of our sin, we were separated from God. And there was no way in the world that we could bridge that gap because of our sin. But what we see is that Jesus filled that gap. That because of the sacrifice of Jesus, we now have peace with God. Not only has Jesus offered us peace with God, but Jesus offers you peace with others. Check this out. This, this is a, a great verse. Uh, we're going to complete 18, verse 18 right here. It says, All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of of reconciliation you have a ministry of reconciliation you have a ministry of peace what what does that mean it means that god has made us peace, peacemakers this sounds great doesn't it but the reality is is, is making peace it's, it's really really difficult especially when it's making peace with people that well maybe they've hurt us in the past or maybe we just don't like them Maybe we don't like the way they treat us. Making peace is hard. In fact, making peace was so hard that it, that it cost Jesus his very life to do so. And before we get into really what making peace is, I, I really want to talk about what it's not for a second. First and foremost, pe making peace with others, is it, it's not avoiding conflict. I can tell you something, the Daniel family, my family, were pretty good at avoiding conflict. And I'm not talking about the initial sense of arguing. We're pretty good at that part. But it's what happens after that. When I was about 19 years old, my parents decided that they were going to get a divorce. And I have to say that it was one of the most heartbreaking and difficult things that I've personally ever been through in my entire life. I got to watch my parents be married for 19 years and to watch it all come to an end it was oh it's tragic and one day i just i thought that i'd share with my dad how i felt about that and so what i did was is i put my big boy pants on and we went and had a talk and my dad well let's just say he talked back <laughs> And I have to say that that is probably the loudest that my dad and I have ever talked. That's the most uncomfortable I've ever been around my dad. And I just want to clarify something. My dad and I, we have a very, very good relationship now. We have an incredible relationship. I love my dad very much. He loves me. But we found ourselves kind of at a, at a crossroads there for a little bit. And I remember going to bed that night, realizing that, oh my goodness, I have to face him the next morning. I have to wake up and eat breakfast with my dad the next morning. I just kind of felt sick because I didn't know how I was going to face him. I didn't know how I was going to talk to him. I didn't know how I would communicate with him. But fortunately, the Daniel family is, a good, is really good at avoiding conflict. I came down, poured my cereal, and we just pretended like it didn't happen. Felt pretty good in the moment. Felt great. For, like, this is great. But it was years of my dad and I getting on the same page to where we have the relationship that we have now. It took a long time. I had to forgive him for some things, and he had to forgive me for some things, some of the things that I said. 
And leading in that, into that conflict, that was something that, that we just didn't do. And I sometimes wonder to myself that, hey, if we would have just really leaned into that a little bit more, you know, could, I, could I have enjoyed my dad a little bit longer than what I have so far? Like, would our relationship be even better than what it is today? There's a guy by the name of Rory Baden. He's a leader, an author, a public speaker, kind of a leadership guru kind of guy. Um, he, he tells a story, and he, he shares what it was like growing up in, in Colorado near the Rocky Mountains. And he talks about how that part of the United States is a very unique part of the world because it's where these, these Rocky Mountains meet the Kansas Plains. And it's one of the only places in the world that has both cattle, cows, and buffalo. And so what was what's so interesting is he said that when it comes to the way in which— they deal with storms, rainy weather, they do the opposite thing. He says, cows, what they end up doing is when they sense the storm kind of rolling up over the Rockies, what happens is, is they start running in the opposite direction. They start avoiding the rain. And, and the problem is, is they can't outrun it. And so what ultimately ends up happening is they end up running within the storm and they don't stop. They just keep trying to outrun the storm and the storm it eventually just passes over them. But by the time it passes over, they're worn out, they're tired, they're, they're you know, they, they're uncomfortable. He, sa- he says the, the buf- buffalo, they do the, the opposite. When they sense that storm running, rolling up over the hills, what they do is they turn into it. And they run right into it. For that, for that moment of uncomfortableness, of getting wet, soaking wet, they find themselves on the other end of the storm faster. I often think that that's how we need to seek to end conflict and be a peacemaker in our life, to take initiative in promoting peace. Uh, another thing that, uh, that peacemaking is not, is peacemaking's not appeasement. All right, peacemaking isn't always allowing others to just get their way. Right? Peacemaking is not being a doormat. Because if that was the case, then Jesus would be the, the biggest doormat out there, right? Jesus, people would be wiping their feet all over him. And, and the reality is that's not who Jesus is. Jesus is loving and compassionate and caring. But Jesus has a backbone. And Jesus stands for his truth. What it does mean being a peacemaker is that we should actively seek to end conflict. See, Jesus, he is the initiator of reconciliation with us. He initiates peace with us. I love that, right? He came into the world to initiate peace with us. We are called to initiate peace with others. And here's the thing, it is hard to do so if that person's hurt you. It's hard to initiate peace when you're angry, isn't it? It's hard to do those things. It's hard to offer forgiveness to those who have hurt us. See, here's the thing. I think we often mix up the difference between forgiveness and trust. Hear me out for a second. Trust, uh, forgiveness is this. Forgiveness says that, hey, I forgive you for everything that you have ever done. Forgiveness deals with past. All right, it deals with everything that has been done to us in the past or everything that has happened with the past. But trust, it deals with the future. It's something different. So what it boils down to is this, is that in this moment right now, we can forgive other people. We can say, hey, look, I forgive you for everything that's been done, but what I'm going to do from here on out is I'm going to slowly relinquish trust as, as a, well, as I see fit so that I'm not hurt, right? It's putting in good boundaries. It's loving people where they are and not finding yourself in the middle of their mess. See, what we do is we let people in our lives to the extent that we can can start trusting them. But we've forgiven them no matter what. See, God expects you to forgive that person so bitterness won't poison your life. And that's exactly what unforgiveness does. 
If you've ever found yourself in a very unforgiving situation, it generally tears you up more than the individual that you're harboring something against. And what we see is that God expects, expects us to for, forgive that person so that bitterness won't poison our life, but God does not expect you to continue being abused as well. He doesn't expect you to be a doormat. See, because of Jesus, we are called to be peacemakers. And there's a very specific reason why he calls us to do this. For one, because of the fact that it's like Jesus. Jesus is a peacemaker, and so we want to live and be like Jesus, and so therefore we're peacemakers as well. But what I love about this in 2 Corinthians 5.20 is that Paul, he tells us why, why we do this. Check this out. Verse 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. God uses us to make an appeal through others. You are the hands and feet of God. You know that? That God desires to use you to bring the greatest message, the greatest gift, and that is the knowledge of Jesus Christ that saves souls. What an amazing thing. And this is why reconciliation is so important. It's not just because our God loves peace and loves bringing peace, but it's so that you can give people the greatest Christmas gift ever this year by bringing peace into a relationship. That not only you can create a peaceful situation in your life, but but you can bring them peace with God, something that they may have never had. And that changes things. Uh, my brother and I, uh, growing up, my middle brother, man, him and I, we are like best friends now. Um, we get along, we joke, we call each other daily. Um, my brother, uh, for a long time, uh, he kind of just sowed his wild oats a little bit. And of course, me working within ministry, we just naturally bunted heads. We didn't get along. We didn't find the same things funny. We, it was just not a whole lot in common. And even growing up, him and I were talking yesterday. We weren't really nice to each other. We just weren't good brothers. I, I hope better for my, my kids. But what's wild is my brother came to me one night. It was a senior year of college. And he was kind of getting back on track, getting ready to go back to training. He played college ball. This was last year. And... <laughs> He came up to me, and we were hanging out with my dad and his girlfriend, and it was just kind of an, a, an odd night. And he comes up to me and he goes, Justin, I don't really know how to say this, and, but he goes, I think I got saved last night. And I just, what? He goes, yeah, I was just reading God's word, and I was trying to get asleep and trying to get just things in order and before I knew it, I found myself praying to the Lord. And before I knew it, I was just kind of convicted of the way in which I'd been living. And all I know is that I prayed for Jesus to save me last night, and I, I, my heart has just completely changed. He goes, I went from being indifferent to loving God, and I just, I don't. He goes, what do I do? And I tell you that that was the start of a an incredible relationship that I value so much. And when Jesus comes into our relationships, when we make peace with people and the gospel changes people's hearts, it's amazing how he can just completely flip the script on the people that you love and care for. It's great. Another thing that we're going to see is that Jesus offers you the peace of God. This is one of my favorite verses, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. It says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is easy is light. One of the things that I want to encourage you in this holiday season and even going into the next year is don't let the uncontrollable circumstances and the unchangeable people and the unexplained problems 
rob you of peace this year. We've got a lot of those things going on, don't we? We have a lot of just uncontrollable circumstances that we, we don't know what to do with. And not only that, but unchangeable people, it's really difficult to make peace with people who are unchangeable, but, but what ends up happening in, in our effort to even kind of reconcile things sometimes, it's frustrating. And they're just problems that we didn't know where they came from or why, but they're here, and we got to deal with them. You know, it's so funny. Uh, there, was a, there was a study that came out this year uh, it's, it's the emotional health of people in 2020 versus 2019. Uh, I was reading through, I saw it in a Facebook post. I think Adam even sent it to me, and it was just kind of, it was on the topic of conversation this, uh, this week as we were just kind of going through the week. And it was, it was interesting to see how nobody's doing better this year. I mean, that's essentially what the study said, except for one group of people. What we see is that the only people who are doing better this year than last year are those who attend Worship Weekly. How wild is that? You know, there's a great verse, a wonderful, wonderful verse in, in Philippians chapter 4. Is that when we approach God through prayer and supplication, He brings us the peace that surpasses understanding. See, the more you pray, the less you panic, and the, the more you worship, the less you can worry. I love Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He settles our hearts. He is able to do that. And I hope that he's done that for a lot of you today. And for some of you today who are like, man, I just don't feel very settled. I would encourage you to keep pursuing him. See, here's the deal. Jesus brings the peace of God. The peace of God comes through living and enjoying one day at a time. Sometimes we start thinking about tomorrow and the next day and next week and next month and next year and all of these things when today has enough trouble, has enough problems. Let's, let's focus on today. Not only that, but we see that the peace of God comes through accepting what we cannot change. There are some things in our life that we, we just can't change. We don't have control of it. No, over, no matter how much we wish we had control over the situation, we don't, and we worry about it as if we do. What if we just turn those things over to the Lord? I know that's an extremely Christian answer to do. I know that's like, Christianity 101. But he's more than capable of meeting our needs. We see that the peace of God comes through trusting in God's love and care and his wisdom. Something that I have to do very, very often is remind myself that the Lord is wiser than I am. The lo Lord loves more than I could love. And that he does care for me. See, the purpose of Christmas is we can now celebrate because our Savior has come to bring reconciliation. That our Savior brings peace. Right? That he brings peace with God, that we were separated from God because of our sin and because of the sacrifice of Christ. We are yet now united to God. We see that he, make, he makes us peacemakers with others, right? That, that he brings peace with others. And not only that, but he be, brings peace to our hearts as well. And I, I want to encourage you guys this evening that when Jesus was born, we can celebrate because our Savior came into the world. And he went to the cross for you and I. He rose three days later 
proving that he is a God who keeps his promises and is capable of dying and forgiving sin. And because of that, today, we have something to celebrate. We have something to rejoice in. The fact that we have peace with God. The fact that he can grant us peace with others. And that you can have peace in your heart. Let's pray. Father, we come before you. Father, I just pray that this Christmas we can be reminded that you are a God who loves us very much. That you are a God who came into this world the same way that we came into this world. What an amazing thought. And that God, he went to the cross for us. I, I just pray for those who this morning are battling with having peace with you. That maybe they've been living their own way, maybe they've been following through with their own desires, and right here in this moment, in this season, you are calling them to repent and turn towards you. Father, I, I pray for those of us who are having difficulty not seeing the potential joy that we can have this holiday season with our family and friends, our coworkers. That because of tension in the relationship, we don't know what we're going to do, and we don't even know how we're going to handle these situations. But Father, I pray that you remind us that we are called to be peacemakers, that maybe we can lean into that tension rather than avoiding it altogether. Hopefully bringing Jesus into those relationships. And for those of us who are just having a difficult time keeping it together because it's been a hard year, remind us. Not only remind us, but bring us peace. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Justin. Justin continues to do such a great job uh, leading our next generation ministry here, and we're so blessed to have him on our team. So there are next steps and the connection card that's inside your app. Please feel free uh, to mark those, and we always are honored to pray for you. So if you have a prayer request that you'd like to share with us, uh, we would be honored to pray for you this week. It's been a fun day. So Justin, you got to hear from him teaching. Uh, Matt mentioned earlier, Charles uh, Mooney, they haven't been on our campus since July when they moved, so it's so great to have them back. Uh, Charles and Mary Elizabeth and the whole Mooney families around here, so make sure you say hi to them. And then our worship team gave me a Christmas present today. They gave me my Christmas present, and I'm wearing them on the stage because they didn't think I'd wear them out on the stage. I am wearing these on the stage. These are vintage Air Jordans. Now, for those of you who did not grow up in the 80s, or maybe you did grow up in the 80s and you didn't care, I was a kid in the 1980s, and these were all I ever wanted, and I never got a pair until today. So I'm a little fired up, right? So, um, yeah, you can cheer for Jordans. It's okay. So I might preach in these from every week from now on out, all right? So that's just how this is going to be. These are not, not part of the Moving Forward special offering. I want to make sure everybody's clear, okay? Our worship team raised the funds to give these to me, and I'm super fired up. And um, I could talk about them, but I'm, I'll, I'll, maybe in the lobby we'll, we'll exchange stories about Air Jordans. I do want to talk about a few other things, though. The Moving Forward, hey, I did mention that, the special offering. Five ministry initiatives um, all the way till January 31st. You have the opportunity to give. Let me give you an update. As of the end of the day Friday, so I don't know, some, some giving, some money may have come in over the weekend. But as of the end of the day of Friday, so far as a church family, we've raised $33,000. So I think we should stop and praise God for that. That is awesome, okay? So quick math, that's about a third of the way there. Our goal is $100,000. Now it's going to take all of us not uh, giving equally. It's not about equal giving, but it is about equal sacrifice. So if you have not given yet, let me challenge you to continue to pray. Now if you give between now and the end of the year, remember that will go towards your tax deduction for this year. The offering goes through January 31st. You can give in January, but that won't be a tax deduction until the following year. Just something to kind of keep in mind as you continue to pray through this, and we will continue to update you as a church family. I mentioned this last week. Let me make sure we're all on the same page with our holiday schedule. Christmas Eve, it is not far down the road. Two services, four 5.30, both in this room. They're the same service. We will broadcast both of those services 
online as well. And so if you want to attend here on campus, you can do that. If you want to join us online, you can do that. Just as a reminder, we won't have children's ministry or child care happening on our campus, which is great. We like having kids in here. So if you show up as a family, your kids can be in here with you. And then the last Sunday of this year and the first Sunday of next year, we're online only. Now, we were online only for four months earlier this year, and we're doing this again for a couple weeks. Somebody asked uh, last week, is this tied to the rise in the COVID rate? It's not. Now, the rise in the COVID rate is something that we all need to be aware of, and we continue to pray for those who are suffering from it, and we continue to do lots of things here on our campus each week to make sure that you are safe. But the reason why we're doing online only for these two Sundays, quite simply, is to give all of our children's ministry volunteers a break. We don't have as many people serving in children's ministry in the season, and that's okay. Uh, we feel really blessed that we're able to offer it um, every week at both of our services, but those folks have been going strong since Sunday, September 13th. So we just want to give them a break. We give them a break. So what we will do is worship together as a church family online only. Those two Sundays will come back on January 10th with options. And that's been our goal all along is to offer you options. That if you want to worship on our campus, that is great. If you want to worship online, that is great. So we'll be online only those two Sundays. We'll be back on the 10th giving everybody Options. I hope you've had a great day today. Next Sunday, we are going to wrap up this series with celebrating communion. Next Sunday, all of your kids, when they're checked in, they're going to get a Christmas gift. They won't be Air Jordans, I'm sorry, but they will get a Christmas gift that they can bring home, and it'll be something you can do together as a family on Christmas Day. So it is going to be a great day. Hope you'll be able to join us. Let's do this. On your way out, make sure you find someone. Tell them Merry Christmas, and then make sure you see the animals on your way out. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. Thanks for being here today.